Thank you so much for joining us this evening uh, for this special event. We are very grateful to our Board of County Commissioners and other partners for joining us for this listening se session, uh, returning to work. Um, our goal with this event is to hear your stories, what's getting in your way, how we can be of most assistance across this vast network of partners that we have. I'm Bridget Daisy, I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Executive Director of Clackamas Workforce Partnership, which is the local workforce development board serving Clackamas County. I'm going to introduce each of our listening panel members. Um, they're going to say a few, uh, make a few comments about uh, who they are and why they're joining us today um, to, to hear what you have to say. And, uh, and then we'll get started with the event. So I'm gonna start uh, and turn it over to Commissioner Schrader. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank Bridget and David and members of the Clackmas Workshop Force Partnership for jointly producing this event tonight with Clackmas County. Um, these digital listening sessions, we've been doing them way over a year now, and they're just one way where we as county commissioners continue to stay directly connected with our residents and stakeholders. So far, we've done over 20 of these uh, events and we will hold uh, at least one every month until the end of 2021. So we're interested tonight in hearing what you, our residents, are facing with the change to the unemployment system. I'm looking forward to hearing your comments. As Bridget said, uh, we'd like to hear from you what the challenges are, what the barriers are, uh, what you are experiences that is working well. The Clackmas workshop, uh, work, workshop partnership is here to um, serve you as well as the county commissioners. So thank you everyone. And um, let's talk about workforce tonight. Thank Great. you, Commissioner Schrader. Commissioner Savas. Yeah. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Commissioner Schrader and I and the rest of the Board of County Commissioners want to make sure our residents have access to good paying, stable employment, and that there are a diverse array of employment opportunities within Clackamas County. Achieving that goal is one of our board's priorities. For years, Clackamas County has operated under a results-based strategic plan called Performance Clackamas. One of the plan's five priorities is to grow a vibrant economy, and today's conversation will help Commissioner Schrader and I better understand the challenges you face so that we can craft more effective strategies to break down barriers to employment. I look forward to hearing from you tonight. Thank you so much. David. Thank you, Bridget. Good evening. My name is David Green, and I work for all of you at Citizens Bank, where I'm the local Clackamas County Manager and a Senior Credit Officer. But tonight, I'm serving in my role as Board Chair of the Clackamas Workforce Partnership, uh, which is kind of an interesting organization. By design, over 50% of the board members represent either private sector employers like mine or local labor unions. So my duty as Board Chair is to support the staff at the Clackamas Workforce Partnership and the multitude of other partners we work with as they take on the many challenges faced by workers and employers. So I'm here to listen and learn and then turn that into my support for the people that actually get the, the work done for you. David, Tracy. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Tracy Calderon. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the Clackamas County Area Manager for the WorkSource Center in Oregon City. I work very closely with Bridget and many nonprofits in the Clackamas County area to bring opportunities to those that are underserved, underemployed, don't have the, the skills or knowledge to find their next opportunity. We're here to help you do that, to elevate our economy in Clackamas County and to serve you and to make access as easy as possible. Thank you. 
Thank you, Tracy. And Martine. Good evening, everyone. My name is Martine Koblenz, and I use she, her pronouns. I'm the County Equity and Inclusion Officer. And I'm here tonight um, very much in the same ways that others shared. Our work of equity and inclusion is to ensure that we are removing barriers, that we're able to recognize that people are differently situated. How do we help to ensure to meet the needs of folks who are experiencing barriers or hardship? And in whatever way, from the perspective of equity and inclusion, I'm here to listen to, um, to you all and um, ensure that we can um, address those issues the best way possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martine. Our front door is WorkSource Clackamas. And again, with this wide array of partners, uh, there are resources, programs, services, coaches, employment specialists uh, to help connect you with resources that may be, uh, that you may be eligible for and not aware of. Um, but as we listen to you tonight, uh, know that we are going to be taking in every word. Uh, we know that there's been a lot of reports, news coverage, and uh, articles about why people are not able to or are not able to look for work or not able to return to work. And so we want to hear from you. Um, what is your experience in Clackamas County? If you are interested in speaking, please raise your hand. Uh, and that uh, there's a, a function at the on, uh, at the base that you'll be able to raise your hand. And if you're calling in by phone, please hit star nine uh, in order to raise your hand. And I will start calling on people as I see folks raise their hand. And, oh, there we go. Uh, and we're gonna start with Elizabeth Broddock. So I'm going to allow you to talk Elizabeth. Um, and so I'll ask you to unmute yourself in just a moment. Elizabeth? Hello. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us. Hi. Sorry, let me to my case, yeah. So I have a couple of things. Um, I was working in restaurants and even with them reopening, there's a lot of restrictions. like. The one I worked in <clears throat> requires a certain amount of staff just to be open, but there's a, a limit on how many people can be in the building. So we can't even hire, have full staff in there with people in the restaurant, right? Um, so that's been hard to get back into. And then the other half of it is I'm trying to move into graphic design that I have the skills for, but I don't know how to get into that. And when I've tried to find like help learning that. Um, the, the resources are like, I just can't find them. <clears throat> Elizabeth, thank you so much. Um, were, was, there, was there something more that you wanted to share? No, I don't think so. Uh, what I will make sure happens is at, um, as we continue with the conversation, um, because we won't be speaking, um, we'll add some resources and links uh, into the, the chat feature um, to share with everyone. And then we'll do a follow-up um, out uh, uh, social media broadcast saying this is where to look for some resources, but we want to make sure to direct you to the information. And that goes for everyone that will um, redirect or direct you to WorkSource Clackamas and other partners um, as we move forward. Okay. Next. Darla, Darla Jensen. Hi, uh, I work for the Portland Hilton in downtown Portland in the banquet department and they have closed the building uh, in March last year for COVID. They're not reopening that building until August and my um, earnings run out in July, my unemployment runs out in July, am I going to be able to renew that? And how is August going to affect me? Do you want me to step in here? Yes, Tracy, thank you. 
Well, as long as you continue to look for work in July and through August till you return back to work, or you have a solid return to work date, your unemployment <laughs> would not be in jeopardy. Oh, okay. Yes, we, we are um, definitely going back to work in August. Okay. As I'm not you... sure what the date is at this time. We have union meetings and the Hilton just says they'll, when it gets closer, they'll be in contact with all of us. If your claim comes to an end, I would suggest that you file for an extension. Okay. Thank yeah, you so much. Available. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Darla. And Jenna, oh, and Jenna Smith. Oh, these are, oh, before we move to Jenna, um, these are the questions that we had asked um, the, the broad community, uh, what's preventing you um, from returning to work or reentering the workforce? What resources or supports would help you return to work? Reliable childcare, public transit, training support. How can, and then how can local, local employers and business owners better assist and incentivize people to return to work. Examples given flexible or set scheduling, childcare supports or remote work options. So those, those are the questions that uh, we're, we're hoping that um, you can all keep answering for us. And I will move on now to Jenna Smith. Hi there. Um, I'm going to try to put this together. I'm not quite sure where to start. I have kind of a, a complicated situation, I feel like. Um, I, I feel like the unemployment um, situation has really been difficult for me in the sense that I started my own business just a few years ago. And in doing so, I took a major cut in my pay, like a six-figure cut in my pay, big. And so I was making pretty much poverty wages and with, with a person at that time, um, right before COVID hit, I had spinal surgery and two discs on my neck replaced. I left in an abusive relationship. So I also became head of household at the same time that I went on unemployment at the same time that my business got shut down. Um, we provide public training events and the majority of my workers are spread around the state or out of state. So travel became an issue um, with training permits in public spaces became an issue, gatherings of people, gatherings of people from different you know, jurisdictions, um, even cross state border. And, and so my business has pretty much been shut down since the start of, start of COVID. Um, it's, it's a training company that we provide training that is CEU accredited with the, for the CCB, the LCB, the ISA, and the TCIA. So um, in addition to us being shut down, our training is really um, required for a lot of other businesses and individuals to keep their licensure and certification current. My understanding is that largely these people and organizations have been told that their licensure won't be canceled, but that doesn't put me back to work, nor does it keep them ocean compliant. So I know that's a lot, but um, in a nutshell, it's, it's really put a big, uh, a big barrier to me, I feel, in the sense that I took what was already a pay cut and an unemployment to a major pay cut. I get less than $300 a week. It's not enough to live on. Um, it's been a struggle and I can't, <clears throat> I can't run my own business especially admits being high risk with spinal surgery recovery um, in a dynamic training environment where it's hands-on. So that's been my, my situation. I'm not sure where to go from here, but I feel like I, I certainly have a whole lot of knowledge and experience um, to put forward that would not only help other people and organizations maintain their businesses, but training that can also help people get into the business of tree care, which is what we train in. Then there's certainly a big need for it with all the fires and the storm damage that we just had. Um, I would like to be put into contact with someone that could potentially help me uh, get some funding and backing to, to build an apprenticeship program okay. in the state of Oregon. 
for arborists. Jenna, thank you. Thank you for your comments and 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 telling us your story. I would say um, what we're gonna what I'm going to add to the real time uh, response to some of those questions is uh, WorkSource Clack is to connect with WorkSource Clackamas at 506 High Street. Uh, I know that it is often confused with the employment or unemployment department, but there are a whole array of resources and services, including connections to the Bureau of Labor and Industry to help with uh, apprenticeship programs. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to ask you to, to connect with us there, and then I'm also going to turn it over to Tracy to see if she has some follow-up. Um, one more thing before you transfer, if you would. If, if you have any resources uh, for grants or funding or anything like that that you could point me towards, I feel like, by large, my industry has been skipped over in, in accessibility to those grants because we are not a non-for-profit, and we're in the educational department, but it's not the K through 12 education um it's we've really fallen through the cracks as far as being able to access money so if you have any resources for that i would highly appreciate it hi janet tracy calderone with WorkSource clackamas have you ever reached out to business oregon biz oregon yes i just talked to them today okay okay and i invite you to reach out to me down at the center um, do you have your contact information somewhere? Yes, we can send it to you in a private chat. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Thank and you for your time. Absolutely. We're going to move on to Rebecca Fitzpatrick. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Um, she kind of, I guess, not really. I'm kind of, um, so I work for myself. I am an esthetician. Um, and of course, I've been shut down since um, back in March as well, the 13th to be exact. Um, still shut down, cannot give facials with masks and things like that. Um, I did... Uh, to be honest, I've I've either worked for the same company or for myself for so long. I I'm 56 year old woman. I didn't even I no longer had a resume, but I did do some stuff online. Um, I know it sounds very sad, but um, so outside of my um, field of work, I feel like I'm gonna have to go somewhere else. Um, for obvious reasons. Uh, so I know when I talked to a gentleman, when um, they had called, they did tell me about the work source. Um, and then you guys reached out to me. Um, I was not clear, however, um, is this something that is all virtual? Um, and am I, and when I did the, um resume online and then you put me in whatever I, to be honest since i've been an esthetician I, i'm really a little bit illiterate even on computer work i know it's so sad um but you know i'm i'm pretty much starting over because i'm i'm feeling like as of right now um being co not comfortable doing my line of work right now and having to go somewhere else i'm kind of thinking gosh what is you know, besides going in and trying to um, apply in person, uh, phone calls, things like that, um, it's, I don't know if you, I would say difficult or if it's just lack of knowledge and, or I don't know, I don't know, I really don't know, but I'm kind of in a, um, I, I'm kind of uh, just kind of at a standstill. Does that make sense? It does make sense, Rebecca. Absolutely. There's there's been there's been a lot of disruptions this last year, and I think there is um, that that makes perfect sense to me. And I would say that based on for for all of the those calling in uh, the 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 expectation or what we hope that you can expect when 
connecting with WorkSource Clackamas is a connection with an, a, a person uh, to create an individualized plan or support or referrals con and connection. So, uh, so, so we want you to, to hold us accountable to that. Um, and Clackamas Workforce Partnership can also help with some redirection or direction of, uh, of resources. So I'm gonna add our website um, into the chat feature right now. Um, and then WorkSource Clackamas is, uh, we're gonna be adding some information in just a moment. Okay. What I also, what I'm running into is oddly, uh, really some, some even entry level jobs I'm running into. Um, of course, they don't come out and say, you know, you're looking around and they're very, they're all young people, but, and then they they just kind of tell you, uh, you're overqualified. I was like, do they even tell people that anymore? <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? Um, so, it's a little embarrassing at times, and, and, and I think it's fearful as well. I think probably a lot of us have a lot of fear, um, but those are the things that I'm running into when I go in in person and I ask to speak to a manager um, just so they can see who I am, and I, you know, I am a professional woman, and that's kind of, and, and, and I've even told, been told we're, it's not quite what we're looking for, and I'm thinking, I didn't even know you could say that. So it's a lot going on, I guess. And I think a lot of us can kind of relate to that that are on you know, this call. Absolutely. Rebecca, how, how much do you love what you did prior to the pandemic? Oh boy, I love it. You loved it? Love, love, love it. I you love say the beauty industry. Uh, that's exactly why I've been in it. Um, I love the fact that I work for myself. I'm not, I'm not, I'm okay with working with somebody else. I did that for years and years and years before mm -hmm. I went on my own, but I absolutely love it. So no you question about an it. Elevated, a very elevated sense of customer service. Who yes. want you? Believe exactly. You because, you know, we hear employers tell us quite often enough, I need somebody who can smile over the phone and you can hear it in their voice. Right. So, yeah, so yeah, don't yeah, I'm sure that there's something for me until I can get back to hopefully very soon what I totally love. Yes. Yeah. If you go to qualityinfo.org, you can look at the skills you have and see what skills transfer into other industries. Qualityinfo.org. Yep. Okay. It's our labor market information website. Okay. 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 Will do. Thank you so much for this time and listening to me. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rebecca. And I'm going to be adding some more information into the chat feature in just a moment, but I'm just going to ask Dave Bracken to unmute yourself. Good evening. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Excellent. Great. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I find myself in the unenviable position of looking for a new job thanks to the pandemic here uh, at age 64. Uh, the feeling I get from employers uh, that I talk to is that um, the corporate attitude towards you know, older workers is uh, they're not particularly interested in investing a lot of time and training. Uh, in someone who's, let's face it, you know, may, maybe three years away from retirement. Uh, what kind of resources does Workforce Clackamas has available to help uh, us older workers find meaningful employment? Thank you, Dave, for that question. Uh, there are various resources available, whether somebody is just starting their uh, career uh, or starting a new career or towards or or gaining to to the end to help with job search so everything from uh, training um, like a spot certificate training connection to an association helping to build your network or connect connectivity to other employers in addition to uh, in addition to helping with job placement and, uh, and building a resume or building a presence online um, so that you'd be more, uh, more competitive in the labor force. So, so there's a whole breadth of uh, services and, uh, available um, through our various partnerships with Clackamas Community College, 
uh, the Oregon Employment Department, Department of Human Services, Job Corps, Easter Seals, uh, our Immigrant Refugee Community Organization, Clackamas County, I could go on. There really are a significant number of resources that we'd like to um, have some conversation. And it sounds like uh, there, there are going to be yours and many unique stories um, that, that will need an individualized approach. And again, that's what we're hoping to deliver at WorkSource Clackamas is to hear what you will each need and help connect you with the appropriate resources that make sense. Okay, now, as I understand it, the WorkSource centers are actually still closed. Is that correct? But uh, is there, but open to appointment? Is that an online appointment? Uh, can I, I kind of prefer to do this kind of thing in person. Is, is it possible to have an in-person appointment at, at WorkSource Classroom? Yeah, WorkSource Clackamas will begin its reopening process to in-person appointments as, um, as, as we start to see everything else reopen. But yes, we are doing in-appointment or by appointment only one-on-one. -on -one. And so if you want to call that 971 number that I um, gave in the chat feature, it's 971-673-6400. And you can make an appointment to see, with, see someone face-to-face. Uh, -face. Okay, great. That's good to know because um, I'd rather do this in person than virtually. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks a lot, gang. You bet. Thank you, Dave. And I'm going to... Uh, uh, Unmute uh, uh, Leslie Bracken. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, good. <laughs> good evening. Um, I'm one of those unique cases. Um, I am a 57 year old woman who has spent her entire career in the software industry, uh, mainly as a business analyst. Um, and then most recently developing e-web forms for a company in Tiger. I was laid off uh, due the, to the pandemic. I have a letter in writing from my previous employer uh, stating that I was laid off for economic reasons and not for performance reasons. Um, uh, however, um, I'm experiencing uh, definite ageism and discrimination in my job hunt. Uh, no one wants grandma in the IT department. And um, I would like to know, and uh, uh, I have a little bit more to add to this before you answer, um, what resources are available um, for older workers uh, in assisting them to either get back into their career or to change positions. Um, now, the other thing I want to say is I've been looking for a job uh, online uh, since I was laid off. And uh, last fall, I decided that maybe I've aged out of my career. Maybe it's just one of those things I have to accept. And I would. Uh, be delighted to change occupations. And I would be delighted to start over again from scratch in another field. But I can't get anyone to look at me because they're like, oh, you have all this tech experience, you're overqualified. And I feel like I don't know whether that's, again, ageism. It's a, it's a convenient excuse to tell me that I'm too old. Uh, and, well, they can't tell me I'm too old, but um, they say that because they can't tell me I'm too old. Um, I would love to have a job as a customer relations person at a bank. I would love to have a job at a hospital as an intake person. Prior to my um, tech career, I spent numerous uh, years in customer service client facing roles. But I can't get anybody to take a look at me. And I feel like it's A, because I'm 57 years old and they don't know that, but they see that. I'm an older woman. I can't hide the fact that I'm an older woman in a Zoom meeting. It doesn't happen. Um, the other uh, challenge I have is that I have two years of a four-year college towards a degree, but I don't have a degree for that two years. So I'm a, I fall into the category of some college and on most 
electronic job applications, the first thing they ask is, do you have a degree? I immediately get weeded out. So networking is a big thing for me. Um, I'm going to find my job through probably through networking, somebody, somebody that isn't, um, isn't using some automated process uh, to screen their resumes. But I'm just, I'm frustrated. Uh, last fall, I engaged WorkSource Clackamas because I qualified through the CARES Act for job, job training grant. I was told that I, I qualified for the grant. But the only thing available to me through Clackamas Community College was positions uh, around being a medical assistant um, or in the medical field. Um, I'm a diabetic, so I don't want to be involved with patients. Um, I wouldn't mind, again, working as an intake person, but I, I don't think um, a medical assistant career <laughs> is a good path for me. So because they didn't have anything for me, I wasn't able to take advantage of that grant. Um, so I'm, and, and I sent an email back to the representative that was helping me last fall because Joe Biden has passed some uh, job related uh, grant money, again, part of the pandemic aid uh, to see if anything had changed? Was there anything available for retraining to get me into a new job outside of tech? And I got crickets. I did not get an email back. Um, so basically in a nutshell, what can I do to change careers? I've, I've been through resume classes. I have a good resume. Um, I just can't get people to take a look at me. Leslie, thank you so much for telling us your story and, and sharing uh, and sharing the, the experiences that you're having. Um, I would I would recommend um, to reconnect with WorkSource. It sounds like um, we you might have hit someone who uh, who needed maybe who needs a little bit more help. Uh, with making those referrals or doing a little bit more coaching, but there are many uh, staff members who can, uh, again, tailor a response and, and have a conversation with you about where your skill sets are now and where you hope to go um, and what that transition could look like. And so, uh, um, Tracy, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, Leslie, are you connected on LinkedIn at all? Leslie, if you you might have unmuted your or muted yourself. Sorry. Uh, yes, I do have an updated LinkedIn page. We have that guy Ellen Osborne at WorkSource for Regional Business Services. He places people from all walks of life in very quality tech jobs. Uh, I've, yeah, I've met with Alan twice. <laughs> oh God, he didn't get you because he's like. The, the, pl the placement guy. Yeah, my my problem is I'm not a programmer. I oh. don't code. Okay, I know T SQL, and um, like I said, I have many many years as a business analyst, but I'm not technical enough for the positions that Alan places. He's great. He uh -huh. he's been very nice. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm I'm kind of a, a unique. I'm kind of in a unique position and I think I've aged out of tech, honestly. And I really would like a job at, you know, a local bank or in some type of customer service role. I think I'm well suited for that, but I can't get anyone to take a look at my resume. It's like if you write a functional resume where you put your, your skills out there and, and then you list your jobs at the end a lot of employers look at that and say, well, this person's trying to hide something, you know? So it's, it's been very challenging. Yes, I understand. Very understandable. Very understandable. Would you mind if I had one of our 
regional, not one of our, one of our work source center job coaches call you? That would be awesome. Yeah. Could we get your information sent, Bridget, to us? We may, you may, we may have some avenues for you to pursue. Okay. Let, Leslie, why don't, um, again, call the 971-673 number and you can reference this listening session um, and, and maybe uh, ask for Tracy by name and then we'll make some referrals. Okay, great. Thank you. And I'm going to uh, pause on, uh, on taking, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, if you want to share more about um, what you're experiencing right now or getting back to work or what you're interested in doing. But I want to just take a moment and read one of the emails that we had received from Jan Reinhardt. Uh, Jan shared, hello, thank you for putting this helpful meeting together. I, along with thousands of others, lost our jobs in the travel industry starting mid-March of 2020. Many of us are longtime employees of 20 to 30 years who mostly work remotely booking complicated international business travel for major corporations such as Nike, Adidas, Toyota, Dow, DuPont, just to name a few. We have years experience managing our time autonomously delivering high-end customer service to our clients. Many of us were within 10 years of retiring and are struggling with even getting our resumes noticed, not to mention getting interviews. So this sounds very similar to a few of our other uh, folks that, that shared their story. Uh, to, to the first question, what is preventing you from returning to work or reentering the workforce? I personally sent out resumes for months with no acknowledgement of doing so. I then learned there's a specific format that must be used, otherwise it gets electronically tossed. As soon as I hired a professional, I started getting responses. We're a demographic of 50 to 65 year olds who want to work, but are not see, being seen and, and applying for jobs now is so different and can be overwhelming. Now that vaccines are in abundance, it would be great to see a large job fair and meet employers face to face. Could Oregon employment representatives be there too and help with applying for state jobs, including actually working for the employment department who's actually hiring right now in a very big way. So if you're interested in working for the Oregon employment department, please visit the Oregon employment department's website or WorkSource Clock MS so you can talk to Tracy. I'm going to see if we have any hands raised. We have a big hiring push going on right now for the state. And, you know, sometimes people kind of balk at our wages. They're not, maybe they're not the best. I don't know. However, we do have great medical benefits and incentives for staff. We offer a lot of opportunity in state service. And there's a lot of reward in state service. A lot of reward when you work for the state. When you become a public servant, it just elevates your life in a different way. But we are, and I would, I would invite you guys, definitely anyone who's interested in applying for a state job, reach out to one of us and we can kind of coach you along the process and the nuances of applying for a state position. Again, please raise your hand if you'd like to share more, or if you're on the phone, please press star nine to raise your hand and indicate that you'd like to speak. Um, Jan Reinhardt also did want to uh, did answer the second question: How can employers and business owners incentivize people to return to work? Paying a living wage. If it's more than you budgeted for, then offer 35 hours instead of 40, or in addition to paid vacation, offer voluntary unpaid time off too. Some people can afford it, and it saves the company money. When employers offer half of what someone was making and the applicant accepts it, they will surely keep looking for something better and leave you, like, you likely with no notice. We all know employee turnover is costly and causes loss of customer clients. Thank you, Jan, for your email. And I would also say that there, there are conversations, um, uh, Commissioner Savas alluded to the county's benchmark on increasing living wage jobs or self-sustaining jobs. Um, in the coming years. Uh, there's a quality jobs initiative that's being launched now across the Portland metro area. Good jobs is the name of the game moving forward. And so what we wanna do is we wanna elevate businesses, employers, public, nonprofit, private, 
entities that are hiring people at good job with good jobs with good wages benefits and and the other things that people are interested in um, for quality of life and 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 hours that they're looking for in industries that they're looking for so uh, please be um, following uh, both Clackamas County Clackamas Workforce Partnership on uh, our social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to know, learn more about what's going on uh, within any of our community programs, um, in addition to some of the success stories that we hear. I'm going to look at some of the questions here, and I see that um, uh, it, Galaxy wrote, uh, more help for education than FAFSA. Doesn't cover like realtor and other services like that. There are programs to help with uh, with training dollars and support services. Um, if if some some language to use is a uh, 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 workforce innovation funds. Um, there's also a lot of uh, support services through our partners with Department of Human Services and Vocational Rehab. If you happen to struggle with um, a disability or mental health issue or if you are uh, below the poverty line or um, accessing uh, SNAP benefits or uh, food stamps. There, there are resources connecting, connected to all of these different programs. And we just wanna make sure that, that you're aware um, to ask about those extras or those, um, those supports uh, when you're connecting with your case managers, career coaches, or an employment specialist. I'm gonna see if anybody has, oh, it looks like we have a couple of hands raised. Going to... Uh, Go to Jenna Smith. Hi, I just wanted to revisit back. I had one more question around, um, I've had some hesitancy around uh, returning to work in a training environment and the ever-changing rules around, uh, you know, how to control that type of environment, what's, what's allowed, what's not allowed, and just the liability involved. Um, can you speak to or point me in the right direction for, I just feel like it's, it's far too much for me as a business owner and individual to keep up on all of that. Um, it, and it seems like every site you go to, there's something different written. I would, I would direct uh, employers and business um, partners to the business recovery centers. Um, there are business recovery centers available in um, several locations around Clackamas County through um, several chambers of commerce. And uh, I, what I'll do is I'll add the business recovery link into the chat feature, um, and they would be able to help answer some of those questions around those requirements, Jenna. And this would be specific to like high, it's high risk, we're all touching the same things, there's travel involved. So it's not just as easy, I feel like, as, as some industries where it's like stay six feet and mask. That's yeah. like thrown out the window with my business. I hear that. I, I, okay. I hear you. I, I think okay. that they'll at least be able to connect you with resources or get some answers to the questions um, based on your industry. Okay, thank you. And Jenna Smith. That was me, you just covered Oh, it. I'm yeah. sorry. All right. Remember to raise your hand if you'd like to share more. Um, Betty Hook asks, what do you do if your unemployment insurance or unemployment runs out before you find a job? It's a really good question, Betty. We're walking into some uncharted territory with um, benefits being extended as long as they were with the uh, um, with the additional add-on um, from uh, during during the pandemic. And so, what I would say is um, the best thing to do is get engaged with WorkSource. Um, so that we can so that we can help you connect with employment or training opp opportunities before your unemployment insurance runs out. And then certainly um, the Oregon Employment Department would be able to answer questions about uh, your your benefits related to unemployment insurance. And Elizabeth Braddock's question can be next. Oh, and then Elizabeth asked, how long does it usually take between calling in and getting started with the process for coaching and such? Uh, it usually doesn't take much more than a day 
um, for somebody to get connected. Sometimes if, if in pre-COVID, it would be same day that some, if somebody came into our center and they were interested in getting connected and they were registered, we would refer them to a career coach. Um, you know, if that was, if that was something that they had either requested or indicated that that would be of help to them. And so it shouldn't take very long for you to connect with someone so that they even ask you, what are you looking for? Tell us about yourself. What are you most interested in? What's getting in your way? And when they ask you those questions, they're already thinking about all of the different places that they might wanna connect you to. And Lori, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I am a swim coach. I love what I do. I've I've um, been doing it for almost 25 years. And unfortunately, the pandemic precautions uh, have not only closed pools or restricted the availability. I mean, there's now this huge demand for lap swim times. So it's hard for me to get in to get a private lesson at spot. So, you know, until until things open up, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a job for a quarter or a fifth of what I usually get paid um, because I, I love coaching, but um, it's, it just seems like, um, I mean, we're all kind of waiting for things to open up and we're waiting for people to get vaccinated and reach those, those, um, those benchmarks. But until then, I'm kind of stuck, right? There's no... I feel like my hands are tied. I love what I do. I, I'm, I'm 54. I'm not excited about changing careers. Um, and before pandemic, I, you know, life was really, really, really good. But um, so I, I just want to say that understandably, the, the pandemic-related precautions, you know, have necessitated the, the pool closure. I'm not arguing about that, but I'm like, I'm still kind of stuck. So. Uh, so what do you do while you're kind of waiting? You know, I don't know. It's, it's just there are no jobs to be had because the pools are in such high demand. Do you understand what I'm saying? Lori, I think so. You were cutting in and out a little bit um, while you were talking, but I think I got the gist of your message. Uh, and the, what I hear you asking is when you want to go back to the work that you were doing pre-pandemic and you're not able to, uh, because of the pandemic uh, closures and, 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 the, and the lockdown um, situation, um, until things start opening back up, until we hit that 70% and things start to change, um, you don't have anything necessarily to go back to. And I would, I, And what I would say to that is, it, it's not going, it, I, I hope that it wouldn't hurt to connect with WorkSource Clackamas to find out what is available, um, what, what are your options. Um, it sounds like for you to sit tight and hold tight until you're, until things start to open back up so that you can get back to what you were doing. Um, I don't wanna do like an individualized coaching with you right now, but I do think that there are going to be there are going to be people who want to go back to the work that they were doing before, and that makes good sense for them. And so uh, sit tight, do what you're doing, um, and follow the directions as the Oregon Employment Department puts them out so that nothing gets in the way of you um, receiving your UI. Uh, but, 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 you know, keep doing what you're doing because we're going to need people in those positions um, when things start to open back up. Lori, I don't know if that answered your question. It did, and I mean, I, I, that's what I've been doing, just kind of holding tight and, and doing virtual lessons and, and, and accepting other employment. So it sounds like I'm doing what I can. Yes, and, and there might be other resources available to help, off, help um, take some of the edge off during this really challenging time. So that's another reason to engage with WorkSource Clackamas to see what else might be available. Thank you. Absolutely. And I'm going to um, pause for a second and see if any of our other listening panelists um, have something that they'd like to share or um, any other information that, um, that feels top of mind to share right now. And if the answer is no, that's okay. Oh. 
Well, I, I, I'll just say a quick uh, comment as I've been jotting down notes. I, I'm really concerned about the, the feedback that we're getting from folks that are talking about their next job, that are going through such a tough time, and the ageism piece keeps coming up over and over again. Um, and I, there's got to be a way that we can help break through and get folks to understand in the business community the many, many, many advantages of hiring older workers. Um, you know, that there was, there's been great articles published and they, they keep publishing them. Like, I don't know how we get people to read them, but if the Harvard Business Review has a, an article in there about why it's, it's valuable to companies to contemplate this, and we've got all these resources, like the people that are calling in today, it just sounds to me like there should be a way to make a handshake on something like that. So um, that's that's what's kind of uh, hitting me today. And as I said, I'm here to help support the folks that are smart enough to get this stuff done. So we will have a conversation about this definitely at the board level for the, the workforce board. Yeah, thank you, David. I've been noticing the same thing, having been in that, frankly, older age range. Really, what do you do? You've got a skill set, you've lost the jobs lost. And um, I don't know what the drivers are. I guess that would be a question I would have. What are the drivers for hiring, you know, younger workers, except for the obvious, you know, maybe uh, things, you know, that people think they have more stamina, I don't know. Um, but that is disturbing because we do have a lot of folks, um, in, at least who I know, from their late 40s on are planning to work until they're 70 and 80. But if they lose a job, what does that do? What does that do to their retirement? What does that do to, to having families help them? I don't know. I definitely think it's a, a conversation that we will yeah. be having, especially with such a tight labor force. When we are hearing from employers and businesses that they're having a really hard time finding people, and there's so many people who are either looking and not getting a call back, so there's a disconnect there yeah. um, that we need to that we need to solve because um, the communication's breaking down on one of those tracks. I want to uh, I want to look at a few of the other questions. Um, that we have in our, in our, um, uh, so uh, can you help me get a job at Clackamas County? I've worked with them for nine years. They are sourced, they outsourced my job and they did give me some jobs, but they said I was not qualified. Any follow-up for Clackamas County jobs? Well, I think pretty much, I don't know, Paul, we have a process that you have to go through in order to get employed. So I really think the issue there is um, matching up your skill set with what is open at the county. And I believe every month we send out job openings that we're looking for folks. Um, so I don't know if there just isn't a skill set match. Um, I guess we'd have to take a look at it. We do hire seasonal workers. Um, mostly those are folks that are working in our park system, uh, clean up things of that sort. Uh, but by and large, um, I will tell you, uh, working for this county is a pretty good, um, you know, it, we're, we're, we pay wonderful wages and have benefits and everything else. And Paul, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Um, I think you just have to match up with your skill sets is be the only thing that comes to the top of my mind. So. Okay, uh, Sherry said, oh, go ahead, Commissioner Savas. Yeah, I, I, I just add uh, as a employer, um, a former employer, uh, I would say that um, what attracted me as an employer to hire someone maybe over another is your employment records. Um, you know, people that have a, um, uh, that work for a employer for a long period of time is an mm -hmm. advantage, uh, persistence and tenacity. Um, you know, applying and looking everywhere and, and making yourself available. Um, it takes a lot of work, um, but there again, due to the pandemic, it's been difficult because a lot of those businesses have been closed or sheltered um, or shuttered. And it's very difficult to, to get just to find pay, uh, places, but we're seeing a lot of signs pop up. But there again, you want to match your skill sets and 
I'm, I'm suspecting from what I'm seeing when the signs pop up, there are a lot of entry level jobs. They may not pay, yeah. pay the right amount, but mm -hmm. I am hearing from a lot of employers looking for entry level um, folks to walk in the door. And um, that seems to be, there seems to be a, an abundance from what I can tell of signs popping up in, in store windows and so forth. So I, again, don't know what those skill sets are, but um, um, I'm, I'm seeing them pop up. And I don't know what we offer for career counseling. Um, Martha or, or Bridget, do you have any answers to that? Yeah, there are career counseling, uh, our career counselors available through Work yeah. Service Clackamas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the community college, I know, um, also helps provide some of that where you can, you know, find out, you know, what a good fit would be based on your profile. So I would, I would tell people to go there. Definitely. Um, we, the, the workforce, um, the workforce department at the college is a, a big partner of WorkSource Clackamas. Right. And so, uh, so by proxy of going to WorkSource, you're going to get to Clackamas Community College or one of the other partners for coaching. Um, Sherry Morish uh, says, I'm moving into marketing from tech. I finished certifications through OSU and digital marketing. What advice would you give someone about resume submissions with regard to a career transition? Sherry, that's a great question. I think that transferability of skills is something that um, all of us are going to have to get really good at is saying, what are my skill sets and what industries or occupations might they transition into? And so that's another thing that a career coach might be able to help with is um, gleaning out all of those skills. Um, another site is ONET or qualityinfo.org. ONET is the National Labor Market Intelligence site and qualityinfo.org is the state labor market intelligence site. And what they do is they say, this is the percentage of, for each skill. They say, this is how much this position uses that skill. And what you'll be able to see is as you see all of your skills, what other occupations might that skill set um, transition into? So there's some really cool tools available through ONET or qualityinfo.org that you'd be able to um, do some of that mapping, Sherry. And I'm going to go back to uh, how do we display the fast pass ticket? I do not know how to answer that question, Christopher. I don't know how we would display the fast pass ticket. And Chris, maybe if you wanted to raise your hand um, and share a little bit more about um, what you're asking, that would be really helpful. Um, Bridget? Yes. While that happens, can I just jump in real quick? Absolutely. Oh, I just wanted to clarify regarding the question around Clackamas County. I just wanted to clarify that the job listings are posted every week, um, not right. monthly, but every week. And then also, if you did have questions about why you didn't get a, a particular job that you applied for, you can contact Human Resources directly um, and they have their contact information on every job posting so that you can get some feedback and, and they should be available to give you feedback on why you, why you didn't get a particular job. Right. Um, and then the one other thing I wanted to just say is um, that if you are here at this event and you want to share in Spanish, we didn't say this directly, but you can raise your hand still okay. because we have interpretation into English. So please feel free to also share if you want to share something in Spanish. Great. Thank you, Martine, for reminding me it's every week. I stopped looking after my son got a job. I have to. <laughs> oh, um, let's and I'm see. glad we can get that feedback. Yeah. Um, Chris, I don't know if you got your question answered, but I'm just going to allow you to talk right now. If there's something that you wanted to share about the fast pass. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I just had a question. We're supposed to present this to you guys somehow, some way? Um, I don't know how we would do that. No, we usually, when we send out fast passes, they come from the Oregon Employment Department. And when we send them out, it's for you to really come to a live event and drop it in a box. And oh, <laughs> well, I printed it out anyways. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just want to let you guys know, um, um, I'm going to be 49 in July, and I got let go due to COVID, 
in the, you know, I worked in the warehouse industry for many years. And actually I have an interview on Friday for a part-time position. And a lot of my issues being, you know, the age factor is, uh, you know, I'm not like a spring chicken anymore. So like lifting restrictions, I can't do like 75 pounds constantly all day long like I used to. So uh, I'm trying to find stuff that maybe 50 pounds or less as far as weight restrictions, you know, and things like that. So I think I might have found one and we'll keep our fingers crossed on Friday. Wish me luck. We wish you all the luck. Wish you all the luck. All Good right. luck. It looks That's pretty much it. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, thank you for the information. It's really helpful. It looks like uh, number 773986 has their hand raised. If you want to hit star six to unmute yourself. If you unmute yourself, hit star six. Hello? Sí. Hello? Hello? Hola. Hola. Voy a hablar español. <laughs> Hi. Um, lo, voy a hablar español, ¿está bien? Sí, está bien, okay. por favor. Sí. Okay. Muchas gracias. Bueno, yo me siento muy identificada con todos los temas de la edad. Eh, yo tengo 56 años y soy inmigrante y, y pienso que para nosotros es todavía más difícil, ¿no? Eh, ahora con el COVID quedarnos sin trabajo y a esta edad volver a buscar. Y, y se me hace, yo quisiera preguntar más bien si hay algo para nosotros, si hay algo... O, o podría ser prepararnos para, para cambiar de trabajo, para hacer algo nuevo. No sé si haya la oportunidad en nuestra situación. Gracias. There are so many opportunities right now for someone in your situation. We do have staff down at the center who are multilingual that, will, that can help you um, obtain either skills, training information, or resources to start a new job and connect you with somebody to help you find your next opportunity. I encourage you to reach out to us down at the center and, and ask to speak to either Rosa or Arade. They can Muchas gracias. Muy interesante. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you for calling. I'm going to uh, uh, unmute Rita. You can go ahead. Rita Segura. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so do you know if there are unemployment benefit extensions? Um, I don't, I've, I've been unemployed since August of last year. My benefits look like they're going to, um, end uh, August 7th and wanted to know if there are any ways to understand if there's any um, ability for extensions or if it's there's you know anything that I can do other than <laughs> hopefully uh, get a job. I, oh, Tracy. I would say reach out to the Unemployment Insurance Center and ask them if you can file for an extension, if there is money available to do so. We have to believe, I believe we have to be at a certain unemployment rate in order for it to inactivate the extended benefits. But things change on a daily for us. So I would reach out to the Unemployment Insurance Center on their website, a lot easier to access. And you can question them and let them know. If you fill out a contact sheet, contact us form, that's what will get you through instead of just calling and waiting in line on the phone. Submit a contact us form, tell them your situation. They respond to that a lot more quickly than 
than a phone call. Okay, so I have tried that chat feature um, and uh, it really didn't work. So is it working now that you're aware of? I wasn't aware that it wasn't working. I can find out, Rita, and okay. send it back to the administrators. Okay, great. I'll, I'll, uh, I will try that. If that does not work, is there any other options for me? I would say go to works or connect with WorkSource Clackamas, and then um, they might be able to help you navigate um, getting some of those questions answered. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Uh, looks like Anne is asking, I thought that the WorkSource Oregon office in Oregon City was open for appointment only. Can people make an appointment on the website? We don't have the ca ca capability to make an appointment on the website quite yet, uh, but if you call 971-673-6400, we'll be able to set, uh, set up an appointment for you to meet one-on-one -on -one with someone. Uh, Sergey asks, do you have or will you have in the nearest future a jobs fair calendar link for Clackamas County? Mm. If yes, please send it to me. Uh, the job fairs are uh, happening uh, quite often, mostly in a virtual way, although there have been some uh, drive through uh, opportunities. Um, what I would recommend is uh, visit WorkSource Clackamas so you can um, grab one of our workshop calendars where our job fairs would also be listed. Um, and then also follow uh, Clackamas Workforce Partnership on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are posting those job fairs pretty regularly. Um, and then until we have a calendar um, for the whole system that would be able to be operated in a virtual way, which is something that we're gearing up to do um, in the near future, um, Feel free to call 971-673-6400 to gather more information about when those job fairs are available. And we are actually in the process of working on a job fair for Clackamas County uh, residents here soon. I think July, we're working with Clackamas Community College. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Chris Edgeworth, if you, um, you have your hand raised. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. so I, I just wanted to thank you guys for all your information. You guys are very helpful. Oh, you're welcome. That's pretty much it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Chris. Uh, Bitsy, I'm going to allow you to talk now. Go ahead. Bitsy Broughton. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I simply wanted to respond to the woman who was asking if her benefits would be extended. Um, I've been on unemployment for about a year now, and it's very hard to reach them. The, what you recommended, the contact email is the best way, but that's still a very slow process. She might not hear by August. However, what has been very, very effective, and they've been very helpful, is that if there is a way for you to extend they will contact you as you file your last week. And the thing they say over and over and over again is continue to file your weekly claim even after your benefits stop. And that, it keeps you in the system. And the second thing is if you go to their website, there are webinars frequently that are very, very useful. And that's an opportunity to hear them speak directly such as this and to ask questions. And that's another great place to get information. And you can submit a question there and get a faster response as well. So hopefully that will help. Uh, they do have it pretty well automated where they reach out to you if you're unable to get to them when, you're, when your benefits get ready to expire. Okay. Thank you. Bitsy, thank you so much for sharing that information. Um, we really appreciate that, that real-time uh, real uh, capture. I did want to just share uh, another email that we received from Michael. Uh, he answered um, all three of the questions and I wanted to um, read those out loud. Uh, what is preventing you from returning to work or re-entering the workforce? And Michael says, vaccine availability. I've recently received my second dose waiting two weeks for full immunity. Had, to be, had, had I been able to get vaccinated sooner, I could have returned to work sooner. I am at risk, but I was in one of the very last at-risk groups, at which point getting an appointment was an issue. Finally, I was able to get one at Walmart. 
I hate also I hate to talk about future pandemics, but I think it's important in the future. I think job applicants are that are offered a position should be able to get a priority vaccine access. And additionally, I was working with the pandemic when the pandemic started, and it really felt like my employer was only feigning that they cared. They minimally went through the motions to show compliance with state and corporate regulations. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, things were actually much more lax and even lazy. At one point, they had us employees clean up potentially COVID contaminated products in the first couple of months of COVID. That was scary. And I had considered walking out on the spot. Uh, what resources would be would help for you to return to work? At this point, I don't think I need much support beyond that I'm what I'm already getting after being fully vaccinated. I don't think that the need to fear that much, but I really think that work from home jobs should have been or even still should be heavily advertised by iMatch. I know iMatch mostly works for searching parameters listed in our accounts, but that is something that maybe should have its own section. I would have been working this whole pandemic if I could have found something I could do without going out and being at risk. Michael did share a little bit more, but I'm going to um, press pause on that and go back and see if anybody raised their hands. Looks like DF. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello? Didi, we cannot hear you. Okay, so I'm gonna go to a question um, while uh, Didi maybe connects with an um, alternative audio. Uh, Jeanette Pitts says, I'm considering going back to school, but not necessarily to work towards a four-year degree. I'm looking at getting a very specialized credential through medical school in Vermont and healthcare profession as, as an end of life doula. It is an intense 12 week program, it is expensive. I'm curious if you would recognize that as going back to school. I would, yeah, a, a short-term certificate, um, nine to nine weeks or more, um, or 40 hours or more are absolutely um, industry recognized. And I would say that that is a going back to school, yes. Barry Kaddish says, how do you answer the question when they ask, where do you want to be in five years and you're 65 years old? Good question. Anyone want to take a crack at that one? Besides retired? I think retired. I guess honest, honesty is the best policy here. Just be honest. They may get a little chuckle out of how honest you are when you say where you want to be in five years. Might just open up the gate for you. I think that's a, that's a realistic response to that question. Thank you, Barry. And Tony says, as an employer, I've worked with WorkSource to attend virtual events and even drive through events. We have found that the events are fruitless with job seekers. Is there any way that the county can think of, about a large scale job fair that is virtual or drive through? I think I can speak for most employers when I say we would pay for such events. I heard a lot of callers mention age discrimination and that is frustrating. I really feel, I feel really optimistic that an event has diverse employer participation, there must be a way to connect. And I just heard that a job fair is in the works. Uh, so yes, there is a job fair in the works. And, and Tony, we have, we, um, I'm sorry that, that you had a limited um, opportunity to connect with job seekers and past ones. And we hope that you keep giving us a try um, because with each job fair, there is a new potential of folks that are looking. And I would say right now, there are a lot more people looking than there were even a few weeks ago. See if there's any more hands raised. Um, DDF, if you uh, want to give it a try. Let's see, is that working now? It is. Oh, okay, I do apologize. Um, I um, Thank you for having this uh, opportunity as well. I, I want to reiterate that every time I've encountered um, anybody from the Oregon Employment 
department or workforce Clackamas has been extremely supportive. Um, I also want to um, join the group in my experiences of, I have experienced as being a mature worker, seeming to feel dismissed because I'm applying with graduate advanced degrees and many years of experience. And as soon as they see me on Zoom, I can see the faces fall. But um, one of the things that I would like to encourage employers to work with now that we're coming back into opening up and with your liaisons with employers is I'm also in a group that is at high risk. And even now that I'm fully vaccinated, I remain at risk. So I, what would help me um, to get back into the workforce and I still um, talk to employers whenever I get a chance to in an interview is the opportunity for flexibility in remote working or working somehow with um, more safety precautions in place. I'm still not um, at ease or my doctor has not recommended that I be public facing, which was a large part of my um, healthcare <laughs> experience of 35 years. So I know it's difficult for employers as well to navigate the changes day by day. But if you could take that bit back to them as well to offer um, remote act access to experienced workers, that would be very helpful. Thank you for that comment. I, I think uh, the more flexibility, the better uh, moving into these, um, again, unknown, these unknown times. Um, so we really appreciate you um, sharing, uh, sharing your experience as well as um, the, that recommendation. Um, I'm going to um, take a pause right now and see if any if there's any other participants, please raise your hand. We're coming to the um, end of the hour, and I did want to give um, each of our uh, panelists an opportunity to share I, I, and a reflection of what they heard or what they plan to do with this information that they've um, heard today. So I'm just going to see if there's any more attendees that raise their hand, and it does not look to be so. Uh, it does look like there were some answers to questions. You all are, you know, you are living in community, sharing what you know with each other on the call. So thank you so much for doing so. So I'm going to um, stop talking and give our panelists um, an opportunity to share a, a, a reflection or two. I am looking forward to the reopening and hosting people back again in our centers. I look forward to a bright future for all of us in Clackamas. I think we will do that with this Workforce Investment Board. I have many partners and the board behind us to help us move our county forward and to bring it back to prosperity, you know, and make it more prosperous than it was prior to that. We are looking forward to spending those workforce dollars. You know, they may not be my dollars. Those dollars belong to our public to utilize and to access. And our staff are on the edge of their seats waiting to serve the volume of people that will be coming to our doors, through our phones. Um, we will be reopening and the most in need will come through our center and be face to face. It's um, important to us to know though, we wanna see you on your terms, not on our terms. We want our work to be transformational. We don't want it to be transactional. We will probably call you prior to your appointment and help you get set up in the system. So when you do come in to see us face to face, we've got the transactional out of the way, you're ready to move on to your next opportunity, whether it be in skills and training, maybe or into a new job with better wages, livable wages, benefits, you know, and something to help you support your family so they can move along as well. So I'm really looking forward to a bright future for Clackamas County. Commissioner Sabas? Yeah, I just wanna just uh, uh, express my appreciation for everyone who uh, shared their thoughts and questions and so forth. I certainly learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I think what stuck out obviously to a lot of us was 
you know, the concerns about their age and perhaps discrimination or perhaps, you know, their difficulty in getting um, employment. Um, I think the workforce partnership could probably help with that and maybe um, talk to employers and figure out what kind of barriers or opportunities there may be, um, perhaps, and better positioning um, um, our older populations, such as myself, um, you know, into, you know, what can, what, what opportunities are there for, uh, you know, older middle-aged Americans and so forth to get uh, employment opportunities uh, when we reach that age. So I just struck by the number of people that expressed that today. And, um, uh, and again, knowing that there are so many employers right now looking for work and are hungry for workers. I'm not looking for work, but looking for workers. So it just strikes me a little bit as peculiar. So I'll, I'll definitely look into it um, as best I can and talk to some folks and figure out what, what barriers or bridges we can build to overcome those barriers. And I wanna thank all the panelists for their knowledge and participation today and answering all the questions. Thank you all. It's been great to uh, be part of this panel today. Thank you. And I'd like to add, Paul, that I've had the privilege of working on workforce issues since I've been here. And this is a very, very fine board and group of people that are, um, you know, with David and Bridget, Tracy, Martine, all of you uh, being on board to help our residents be as successful as they can be in their job searches, in their retraining, in their, um, in their seeking to, uh, you know, use all their skill sets to the best of their ability so they can have prosperous families. One of the things we didn't hear tonight that I've, I've been intrigued by, because I hear it, because I have a uh, daughter uh, who has a little boy and has another one on the way who's a lawyer, and I have a son-in-law who's also working. And the biggest issue um, I've been hearing from some of the younger folk is childcare issues. But that has been uh, a huge issue in terms of allowing people to feel that they can leave their child in a safe, secure place and be part of the workforce. So I know that that's something that Bridget and I have talked about. Um, it, it goes across all of our residents. Um, it, it hits every, every level, every person of color, whatever that being able to work and know that your children are safe is a huge big big deal so i'm hopeful that um and i'm i'm I am sad to see the ageism out there actually as being like i said being in my senior years myself here and still feeling as if i have a vital um, function and things to add to our community but i hope to continue that those conversations with bridget on what that might look like in the future. And I do believe, uh, I agree fully with Tracy that we will come out of this stronger. And I wanna thank Martine um, for letting me know it's every week. So please, if you're job hunting, take a look at the jobs that are open in Clackamas County. Uh, we are looking for a diverse workforce. We're looking for people who are dedicated to public service. And um, if you find a fit there, please don't hesitate to apply. The county is a wonderful place to work for and to work with. So I'm putting in a plug for Clackmas. Okay. Thank you all so much. It's uh, at the top of the hour. We really appreciate everyone joining us. We appreciate our interpreters for helping us tonight. Um, thank you, panelists. Thank you um, for sharing your story. Um, we want you all to reach your full potential and get where you need to go. So engage with us at Clackamas Workforce Partnership. Clackamas County or WorkSource Clackamas. Thank you so much. Have a good night.